Yeah, absolutely. Um, but one thing they do do well is uh, last week. So I, like many others, sat with bated breath uh, for the Perseverance rover to land on Mars. Uh, I was hooked. If this is a success, could we finally find some evidence for some sort of life on Mars? Yeah, I mean, the search for life on Mars has been has been a difficult one, and I think our experience with the the discovery or the the search for life on Mars so far should inform you about how this is going to work into the future, yeah. which is that the evidence is going to be inconclusive. When the Viking landers landed back in 1978, right? They were two of them were equipped separately. So you've got redundancy with an experiment and they, they scooped up a little bit of soil and they put it into a, into a little container and they fed it liquid and nutrients and they off-gassed in a way that made the researchers think there was life going on inside that bacteria. And then other scientists said, no, 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 that's, yeah. that's a natural thing that you would expect. And yet they, you know, they repeated the experiment, you know, by having two spacecraft, like really good science being done. And then you think about the Allen Hills meteorite that landed here on earth, where there was, there was uh, magnetite crystals inside that were, that could only have been created by life. And yet other people think there were perfectly natural processes. We saw the phosphine on Venus. Mm. So I think that when we have evidence of something on Mars, that's really interesting, it's still not going to be conclusive. Like, unless it's a skeleton. Yeah. <laughs> Someone say, yeah, like, unless there's like a, someone said if there's like a hedgehog shows up and waves to the camera, then yeah. that's evidence of life on Mars, but you're going to get things that are possible life on Mars, possible past life structures that could be formed by life, but we're really not going to get a conclusive answer until there's humans there, there's samples sure. being returned, yeah. that a case is being made in sort of the same way that, that evolution I mean, people still argue over evolution. I'm oh, sure yeah. th these are the videos you deal with. <laughs> yeah. And 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 there could not be a more ironclad system of facts that we know of, and yet people argue about it. And so you will see the same thing. It's just, it's a case that gets made bit by bit, piece by piece over long periods of time. And, there, and, and if you extend that idea to think about what's it going to be like to tr try to know conclusively that there's life out in the universe. I mean, we are around the corner from having the kinds of technology that will allow us to say, say sniff the atmosphere of a yeah. world that is a hundred light years away to see if there's air pollution or excess amounts of oxygen, et cetera, but it's going to be inconclusive. Like look how people argued about phosphine on Venus. Yeah. That's going to be the argument a thousand times over forever. And so I think we're going to live in this gray area. Is there life on Mars? Maybe. We don't know. We're not yeah. sure for a long, long time. We're not going to get this overnight answer. Yeah. How do you stand on the, on that, uh, on the life on Mars versus potential life on the Galilean moons? Cause there, there is a great potential there, isn't there? In the, in the sub yeah 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 oceans. so I mean the, right so the Galilean moons and and Enceladus at Saturn are like the perfect places for life you've yeah. got we know that these these ice moons have large amounts of liquid water under this shell of ice that that the the gases that have been emanating from the geysers on these on Enceladus for example we know that there's hydrogen mixed in with the water there on on Enceladus. And so that tells us that there is, there's, there's a source of energy, some kind of volcanism that's going on, that there's liquid water. And of course, everywhere on earth that we find water, like everywhere we find liquid water, we find life yeah. and there's food for life in the, in the form of this, this hydrogen that's in the, that's mixed in with the water. So every piece that you would require to have life is there perfectly matched all together, ready to go. While Mars, the case is a lot, more difficult that you've got, you know, yeah. maybe there's going to be liquid water deep underground, but it's going to have like the amounts of salinity in it mixed in that it actually could be toxic to life. Like, mm -hmm. like everywhere we find life on earth, every, sorry, every find where we find water here on earth, we find life except where there's too much salt, then we don't. And that might be the condition that's there on Mars. So on the one hand, it's very intriguing. And on the other hand, there's a lot of reasons why there might not be very good chances for there being life on Mars. But the, but the whole quest to find life on Mars 
was started first. Yeah. And and before people really started to build this compelling case that there could be something really interesting going on at, at Europa and Enceladus. There were just hints as the as the vast armada of Mars rovers were being developed and engineered and put into rockets. So we're seeing this delay. There's no plans to send a mission to Enceladus, which is probably the most interesting place in the solar system to go right now. Yeah. There is the Europa Clipper, which is going to be heading like 2035 to Europa. So so we're going to have to wait a while for that case to get built up. So until then, Mars is like our best hope to to do a quick find of life. Yeah. 